Hey, it's the. Have you ever wondered how you can get more users using your app? And after you got your user base, how you can allow your users to access your app immediately in just an instance? And between like many users, many people download hundreds of apps, dozens of apps. How you can allow them to search for the content inside your app? That is the topic for this series for the next three episodes of Code Hangout. Now, we are going to have a look into something called Search API. Starting from iOS 9, Apple allows us to put out or index content inside your app, either it is public or private content, and we can index that or we can let iOS know that the user just access that content and the user can search for those content inside or through the core spotlights for the spotlight that they can just scroll down and search for that right on the springboard and can access your app immediately by clicking on the search result. Here's what I mean by this. So if I click into, this is the start project, if I click into a cell like that, a content, I scroll down, I search for view music playlist and I click into that, the user is taken immediately into our app. They don't have to find our app, they don't have to go to like find exactly the icon of the app. They want to, hey, I want to build a music playlist app, I search for that, or now I want to build a motivational quote app, I search for that, and I can access that content of the app immediately. So that is what we want to do in this episode and in the next two. Now, in part one of this series, we'll have a look into how we can allow Core Spotlight to uh, search API in iOS to index the to index the content inside our app to index the to mark the contents that the users visit our app. So if I see the music playlist app right now, then I can allow the user to come back to that or search for that. In part two of this series, we are going to have a look how to make the search result more details, more beautiful with more descriptions. Believe me, that's really important. And in part three, the most important thing is when the user clicks onto a cell, how we are going to handle the user, the search result clicks. It means that when the user is clicked onto that, it is our job in to put to tag the user to our app and also display the contents that the user is searching for. So sounds good. Let's jump into the demo for today. I'm going to make this a white theme here so you can see better. So this is the star project that I prepared for you because our app search API requires a lot of content because we want to search for content, right? So this app, it just displays all, most of the courses and programs that we are teaching you at Developers Academy. And you can download the starter project right down below in the description link. Okay, so there we go. Um, let me jump into this immediately. Now, this is just a normal MVC app using table view. So we have a table view displaying the master screen and a table view displaying the details screen, okay? And we have a model, a, pr programs a program has multiple courses, okay? And the controller will have courses, table view controller, we have the details and some other stuff, okay? So what we want to do in this video, in this episode is, we want to let the user to search for a course right so we want the user to search for a course having the title description image those things the program all of those things so the first thing we will do this is the same process that you would do in your own app just create an extension for the class that is the for the model class for your app so i will go over a new file command n ios source and swift file and for this i will name this course search because we want to search for our course and remember that i will select the model group and the target is search apis which is the name for our app okay here we go we have this so first thing first now we have six steps to do in this episode number one we will need to import some of the libraries some of the framework that we will need to work on so the first one is 
Number one, import core spotlight. Number two, import mobile core services. These two things, core spotlight allows us to use the all of the things that we need to deal with search API. Mobile core services is, is just one of the things that later on we'll need to use one. Um, I think it is a constant inside that framework. I will explain in just a little bit. Okay. So step number two, we are going to create an extension for our course so that we can access those things. Okay. So let's create an extension for the course. I will have extension and ex extends course, the course class. I cannot type here. <laughs> okay. So step number three, we are going to create a static variable and it is an internal variable and static let's this one will name that domain identifier because this one it will distinguish which kind of activity um, that the user is going for and we'll use this as a key that we were looking for to handle the search results we will not use it immediately in uh, this episode and the next but we use that to handle the when the user click onto the search result okay so static let domain identifier identifier equals here i will use a reverse domain name io.dictrend search api dot cause okay below there step number four we are going to have an activity user activity user in thought now i have to explain a little bit what is an user activity and it is a subclass of NS user activity. Okay. NS user activity allows us to, it is the class. Pay attention. This is the class NS user activity. NS user activity. This is the class that allows us to have a feature called hand off. Hand off. This is like, just imagine you are reading your emails on your iPhone. And then you come back into your Mac and you want to pick off where you left off, right? So there will be a little icon, a mail icon sliding from the dock and you can click onto that and mail app will displays the exact location of the, uh, of the mail that you are reading. Crazy, huh? It knows everything. Well, in fact, it doesn't know anything. What you have to do is as a developer, we will have to tell us NS user activity to mark the location that the user is using our app. It will observe what the user is using. That's why we have it user activity. Okay. So here I will use internal var user activity, user info. This is a dictionary of typed NS object to any object. And it is a computed property because we want to make sure that this will return the title of the course. Okay. So this is a dictionary which has the key is title and the value is the title of this course. Title here is a property of the course. Make sense? All right. Step number four, number five, we are going to have the user activity. This user activity, again, it marks where the user is using our app. So I will have an internal var and user activity. And that's user activity. Okay, it's again a computed property. And first, I will have a activity is NS user activity. And we'll have the activity typed. The typed here, we are going to use the cost.domain identifier. Guess what? It is exactly this domain identifier. And again, we just assign it here. Later on, when we handle the user search result click, then we will have to search for this activity domain identifier. We have to search for the type of the activity. Make sense? All right. Next, this activity. It is the properties of this activity is exactly the search result that we are going to see in our app. So our app right now, it doesn't have anything. So when we, um, when we want to have the search results, let me show you the complete project somewhere over here, right? So this complete project, 
we have the uh, we have the um, what's that the thumbnail of the search result we have the title of the search result and we also have the description of the search result so that's what we want to configure first activity that title is the title of the course then I want to have the activity dot user info the user info here I will assign to have this user activity user info now notice you don't have to necessarily just like have just the title you can have anything that you want okay because this title is the piece of information that later on we will need I don't want to explain it right now but in the in episode number 64 5 65 I'm going to explain why we will need this title this is just a piece of information that we will need so we want to pass along this user info which is user activity user info I know it is mouthful okay um, next when the user is searching for our app iOS will index that will find those information via keywords right it's like this it's like the basic of searching so we also have activity dot keywords and the keyword here is an array of string so the first one is maybe course right our app is about courses e-courses so maybe the user want to learn something and how about the title so the user want to search for something like programming in script build a motivational quote app build a tip calculator build a uh, social network app using ios those things if the user is searching for those and our app the results will come from our app okay next we have program if the user is searching for total ios blueprint then our app will display that next maybe the description of the course it is more details like uh, you are going to use table view controller in the own things table view course so if the user is searching for ui table view controller then that search results will display immediately cool you make sense make sense right so next we will just have to return this activity then we have the user activity okay now one thing the reason why we have to pay attention we must make this a computed property the reason for that is every time we access that it will create another instance of ns user activity because it is a computed property it will access all of these things to update the latest information the reason for that is just imagine if you are building a motive uh, not motivate um, a social network app right your posts will changes and the post that the user clicks on will changes or like that information will changes we have dynamic information not just static information like we are dealing with so what we want to do is every time the user clicks onto that and as user activity will have new information about the thing that the user just visits so that's why the information will get up to date okay that's one of the requirement and I would say it is a recommendation okay so next so this is step number five our last step in this episode very excited is we are going to show or we was sort of register to use this search result okay we will do that every time the user here's our app so every time the user not like inside okay it will take a, a little bit here we go here is the tail view controller when we click onto that we want to let ns user default to be indexed inside the ls system so this class here this is the course detail table view controller which is the second file under the controller here you can click onto that okay and here in the view that load um, here we go in the view that load I'm going to do let activity equals course dot activity this course is exactly the course that we are seeing right next we will have activity dot eligible eligible for search is true so we want to have this class this course to be searchable next we'll have activity dot content attribute set 
question mark related unique identifier is nil okay and the last thing is we will have the user activity that is this activity so we just create the activity configure some properties for that activity and then we assign the user activity which is a property in an extension for the ui responder okay it is new in ios i believe it is eight or nine and it allows you to assign that ns activity so now let's run the project to see how it looks like here we go So this is our app and what we want to do maybe scroll down here how about all things UI tail view clicks onto that okay here we go and then I will exit the app okay exit the app like this and I will scroll down like that and this will search UI table view Okay. Now, because UI table view is a lot of things, and call spotlight, spotlight here, it will search the web on itself, so we have to move down a little bit, and you will see that our app appears on the search bar, on the search result. We click onto that, it takes us to the app. Notice two things before we move on to the next part. Two things. The first one is the search result here, it, it just has the title because we just assigned the title of this activity to be that right the second thing is the icon is our app icon the third thing is we don't have any description about the search result and the last thing is when we click onto the search result nothing happens it just takes us to the app right so what we want to do is in the next video we will want to uh, configure some more about the search result so that the search result it is more beautiful it displays more information and in the last video we are going to have when the user clicks onto a search result then we will text the user immediately to this screen the one that the user is looking for okay sounds good so i hope that you enjoyed this episode if you have any questions again feel free to post it right down below and as always I hope that you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.